Okay, um, today we are looking at a paper called Beyond the Ability to Pay, the Health Status of Native Hawaiians and Other Pacific Islanders in Relation to Health Insurance. So for the concepts of this paper, um, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander populations suffer from a number of poor health outcomes. Um, as we've already kind of looked into, they have high rates of uh, overweight statuses, obesity, hypertension, asthma, and cancer mortality. Um, and they have barriers to healthcare access. Um, so they, like we already know, they have high mortality rates and low life expectancies from a lot of other research, or like, you know, this is kind of why we're studying these populations anyway. Um, but the high mortality rates and low life expectancies in the paper, at least, um, are due to uh, rates of colonization and historical trauma. So historically, colonial forces prohibited the transmission of language, culture, and traditional practices, which resulted in a significant damage to health and education and social well-being. Um, so the paper mentions that a key determinant of health for the NHOPI population is a history of colonial oppression, which is something to like keep in mind, um, take into account when looking at like healthcare access for these populations. Um, so this study specifically examines the effect of health insurance coverage on the health status of NHOPI in comparison to Asians, which was really interesting to me. Um, and they use the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, uh, BRFSS, 2012 data and logistic regression. So the BRFSS is a series of healthcare, or sorry, health-related telephone surveys that collect data about US residents regarding their health-related risk behaviors, their chronic health conditions and use of preventative services. So they call people on a telephone and ask them like survey questions. Um, so they ultimately, uh, this paper explores if health outcomes are comparable between NHAPI and Asian patients when insurance coverage, coverage is the same and other variables are controlled. Um, so what are the methods of this paper? Like, how do they study this? So they, one of their goals is to compare their health status, healthcare access, and health outcomes for NHOPI compared to Asians. Um, and you may have a question, why are Asians the comparison population? Um, so Asians historically experienced the greatest positive health outcomes and lowest mortality rates and disease uh, prevalence rates. Um, so they thought it would be a good idea to compare NHOPI and Asians, so like the lowest or whatever you're comparing to the ones that are the healthiest in that sense. Um, so these are some of the questions that access to healthcare or like that the BFRSS, I think, um, they asked in their telephone health surveys. Um, which are like four core questions. One of them, did the respondent have healthcare coverage in the form of health insurance, prepaid plans, or government plans such as Medicare? Uh, the second question, did the respondent experience a healthcare cost barrier in the past 12 months? I didn't mean to not do this. Um, the third question, did they have a usual source or provider for healthcare, um, which is defined as having at least one person they considered as a personal doctor. And the fourth question, did the respondent visit a doctor for a routine checkup in the past year? So the BRFSS, I believe, um, would go call people, ask these questions and quantify access to healthcare um, in order to use in this, um, in this like data collection thing. Uh, the variables they looked at or the variables they collected on top of those questions were gender, de sorry, gender, marital status, employment status, age, education level, and household income. Um, and some of the lifestyle and behavioral factors included their current status on smoking, their current status on drinking, and their current status on weight. Uh, for the sociodemographic factors, uh, they're conceptualized as a broad set of social determinants for health and healthcare. And for the lifestyle factors, uh, they represent lifestyle risk factors that may affect individual beliefs, behaviors, and needs associated with healthcare. So these are all important things to keep in mind when uh, collecting this data. Um, so once they looked at this data, they analyzed this data, they came to a few outcomes. Um, one of the outcomes kind of looked at 
health in general between NHOPI and uh, Asian populations. Um, they found that NHOPI in the US are more likely to be unemployed, um, have less high school education and live below the federal poverty line than US Asians, uh, meaning they may have a greater prevalence of diabetes, heart disease, depression, kidney disease, heart attacks and stroke. Um, they have, or they reported higher rates of fair or poor healthcare, um, being obese, smoking, and heavy drinking. So these are some of the things that they reported in their, um, in their surveys. And uh, a second set of results from the surveys uh, mentioned healthcare access. So NHOPI in the US are more likely to experience cost barrier to accessing healthcare. Um, and this relationship persists between those with and without insurance. Even if they do have insurance, um, they're more likely to experience some sort of cost barrier in accessing healthcare. Um, and NA uninsured NHOPI are less likely to obtain an annual checkup in general. Um, so these initial findings confirm that health disparities do exist and are substantiated by in NHOPI populations, regardless of health insurance status and if they have a healthcare provider. Um, there are significant associations between ethnicity and self-reported health status among insured NHOPI and Asians. Um, so like they wanted to make sure to take those associations into account uh, when creating laws or um, rules for like healthcare access. Um, and when individually controlling for socioeconomic factors, history of disease, lifestyle and behavioral factors and access to healthcare, um, when controlling for all of these, the difference in NHOPI and Asians reporting fair or poor health is decreased, but not equal. So when they were able to control for these factors, there is a decrease in the difference between um, healthcare access in NHOPI and Asians, but they weren't ever equal at any point. Um, this paper also mentions the 2010 Affordable Care Act. Um, because they focused on providing affordable insurance. So for you, US populations, um, generally the US government had an Affordable Care Act that focused on providing only affordable insurance to people thinking that affordable insurance will greatly increase the health of these populations. Um, but with these results, it shows that policymakers and healthcare professionals must acknowledge that making insurance more, insurance more affordable isn't the entire solution to eliminating health disparities. Um, although having health insurance increases the likelihood of having healthcare provider and participating in an annual checkup, um, it doesn't necessarily eliminate any of these health disparities. It only like reduces the difference in health disparities which is a huge thing. I think like their lack of access to insurance, like you would think um, trying to, you know, fix health disparities in certain populations in America. Um, the first thing you would kind of think, or some of the first things you would kind of think is, is um, people need more health insurance. This can also go for like what COVID, I guess, or any symptoms that you may have of COVID. Um, you know, we might be less affected if we have health insurance or if everybody has health insurance, but results like these kind of show that it doesn't necess necessarily like fix everything. Um, access to health insurance isn't the only thing that we should be taking into account when looking at health disparities, even if we give um, everybody free health insurance or affordable health insurance, um, there will still be other socioeconomic factors that contribute to um, terrible health disparities for these populations, which is shit, you know. <laughs> and then some limitations of this study. The data collection protocol is a random digit, uh, random digit dial telephone survey, um, which basically limits participation to those with a household telephone in a service coverage area. Anybody who doesn't have a household telephone or isn't in a good service coverage area aren't necessarily included in these surveys, which contributes to an underestimation of actual counts of these populations and what they report. Um, also, the paper mentioned um, because, these, because the NHOPI populations are less likely to feel comfortable answering um, kind of vulnerable questions such as those, 
Um, it also might contribute to an underestimation of actual counts or kind of like skew the data here and there based on um, their comfortableness or how comfortable they are in revealing these things about themselves. Um, just being able to like talk about it or how comfortable they are in talking about these um, health conditions or their own health conditions uh, depends from group to group. And so it can contribute to an underestimation of how many people are affected. So what can we do with this data or what can we do with this paper? Um, we can map it which is always fun, which is the point of GIS, I guess, right? So VRFSS data is really fairly accessible uh, and being able to map the areas of NHOPI populations with low healthcare coverage against other socioeconomic or environmental factors um, can really show the intensity of how much these populations have to deal with on all fronts. Um, kind of like making that impact like we know and we hear that NHOPI populations deal with like they have um, a lot of health disparities they have a lot of um, like bad healthcare outcomes their environmental factors aren't always the best their socioeconomic factors aren't always the best um, we kind of like hear all these things we know all these things but how does like how are we able to make an impact with general populations like this is something we really have to focus on um, or we should focus on when it comes to uh, deciding healthcare for um, the US or looking into like health levels of populations in the US. Um, and so like, how are we able to make an impact with those results or with that data? Um, visualizations, visualize it. Um, so we can further look into what barriers are uh, what the barriers are in assisting specifically these populations. So um, what barriers are there in helping these populations? Why aren't they necessarily getting the help that they need quicker? Um, or looking into ways that organizations have already been trying to help these populations. So what are they doing? Um, how are they trying to help? And um, what also might they have to take into account when trying to help these populations? Um, it might be a good thing to like look into how people might have already tried to help NHOPI populations and it didn't work um, and to try and figure out new ways to assist these uh, these populations um, uh, he, he going and going on from here you know what I mean yeah okay <laughs> yeah that's the end of my side deck yay